Hello and welcome to a Blood and Pigment ship review. We are here finally talking about the mighty galleon, the symbol of Spanish power in the Caribbean. I'm Joseph. I am Guy. And I'm Dan. The galleon was a cargo ship turned auxiliary warship. As often as they were used as treasure ships, they were also used as warships in Blood and Plunder. The galleon is a size four ship and cost 25 points in your force. The galleon's max speed is four inches. It has a sail settings at 4 inches, 3 inches, 2 inches, 1 inch, and 0. Its one word value is negative 2, and it has a turn value of 2. A galleon has a hull fortitude of 5 and a hull integrity of 7. It takes 24 hits to drop this ship down to 1 fortitude. The rigging of the galleon has fortitude 4 and integrity 6. The ship's draft is 12. The Galleon's forecastle can hold up to 26 models, the main deck can hold up to 35 models, the quarter deck can hold up to 27 models, and the poop deck can hold up to 18 models. The gallery subsection in the back can hold up to 6 models, and the two fighting tops can hold up to 4 models each. There are also 4 gun decks below that you can hold up to 20 theoretical models in each, so a total is 203 possible models on this single ship. The ship's firepower is currently unmatched in Blood and Blender. The ship can hold up to 14 pairs of cannons, including the bow and stern chasers. Because this is a size 4 ship, they can be a, any type of cannon, including heavy. The Galleon has the following ship traits. Gallery, gun decks, 4, fighting tops, 3, Chasers, Whipstaff, and Heavily Built. This is quite a large ship to see on a tabletop and is still impressive even with the 6 rate out there. Yeah, it is about the same length as a 6 rate, but it is massive. It really makes the 6 rate look uh, kind of small compared to it. So tall and bulky. and Definitely a head turner. High freeboard. It's awesome ship. So many guns, too. So many guns. I think it's an awesome ship. It's definitely not for everyone. It's so expensive and it's so, uh, it's such a big hobby project. There's just so much resin to paint on here. And you need a lot of models to really run it. And you, as much fun as it is to play, <clears throat> you don't get to play it a ton because it takes a high point game in general. But I think it's super well designed and really fun to play and more flexible than it might appear at first that's my take on it what's your guys insta take yeah well i have a lot of uh experience playing this i finished mine and then kind of COVID happened uh so i did a lot of solo games with it and you can kind of play this at any point levels i i even managed to play it in a hundred point game by just crewing only the bow section of course the, you did the uh you have the four swivels and i had two crews on each pair of swivels. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It is it is pretty good. And it's also the easiest way to play with heavy cannons. You don't even have to buy heavy cannon miniatures. You, uh, It comes with heavy cannon stubs. Right. So, that's you don't a have to put any cannons on the ship at all. They're all below deck. So. Yeah. Nobody wants to buy 28. Heavy cannon models at five bucks a pop, <laughs> or more. Well, anyway. some some of us do, but that's true. I have embarrassingly close to that now. But, <laughs> but it, it really does seem like a really fun ship to you to to do. Like you said, the main barriers is the cost, completely the cost, and also the uh, hobby hobby project, of course. We've all played with people that have play uh, unpainted ships, but to get the ship completely, completely painted and out there, I think I mine took over a hundred hours. <laughs> Just mine probably took thirty hours, but yeah, I got it started and then I, I did the flute. That was a huge project, the biggest ship I'd done so far. Then I got started in the galley, and then I had to take a break and come back. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, should we took look at some of the pros in game? Um, For sure, what the ship can do, and then look at some of the cons, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll I'll start. Like I said, the heavy cannons. That is 
kind of the best thing, in my opinion. This has can take heavy cannons, and it can include uh, bow chasers, which is kind of was new with this ship, and stern chasers. With heavy cannons, mean means that you're really getting two cannons that point one direction with those chasers for for half the cost for like one in a, one and a half of cost. Um, it's really good, even if you do medium cannons for set for ten points. Medium cannons pointing the same direction is again good. Uh, it also has the boarding protection of the gun decks. Which we hear hear rumblings that they're going to change the rules for the gun decks. Hopefully, give gun decks to all of the ships that have gun decks. But the the current way the gun decks work, they are they basically make the unit almost immune to small arms fire by putting them in the gun deck, and that's that's really good against boarding. But what's also good against boarding is this ship is so high it takes a dedicated action to board it, because <laughs> your your crew, if you're trying to board it, has to literally climb up those those two inches. Mm -hmm. So that that means that any boarding action against you has to be usually with a commander or, or you're in a, a flood, uh, an officer <laughs> directing them to do a dedicated climb action. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I, I've played this in smaller games too. Even though it's it's really it looks big, uh, you're only paying twenty five points for it, which is four more points than the light frigate. And, and considering it has three fighting tops, which you pay two points for each on the light frigate, it's a bargain, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get those fighting get, uh, decks for free or fighting tops for free. You get the the gun decks for free, the gallery. There's no real options that you can buy on this ship. Right. It's all there already. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the premium stuff it comes with. And then even if you're in, like, again, a smaller ship, just trying to hit the guys in the fighting tops is difficult because the ship itself is already tall. Then when you add the mass, it is really difficult, even when you're right alongside, to hit the guys up there with just small arms fire. I tried, and it was frustrating. <laughs> Now, if you're using cannons, though, the fighting tops are... Well, that's in the con. We'll get to that. What other pros does the ship have, Joseph? The toughness is one thing. It's heavily built, and it has a fortitude of five, and it has an integrity of seven. So it's very difficult to actually make any progress to shooting this with cannons. The only time I've seen real damage happen here is a galleon versus a galleon, which if you play it, play it heavy cannons all the way down you can destroy each other pretty handily which i have learned the hard way but cannons don't do a lot unless you really focus um the height we've already considered that it's really hard to board cool thing is you really have to kind of come up alongside it and board that main deck which is the lowest deck which is authentic that's how they really would have boarded so that's kind of cool and the fighting tops are free uh you can put little units up there although and the way the game scales, if you're playing a 400 point game or whatever, you have to, it's, you can't make a four man unit. So you have to kind of do part of your unit up there. So that's kind of a strange interaction with the uh, subsections right now. Yeah, it has some cool interactions, I think. The main one is that if you decide to board a ship with a unit that has models in the fighting tops, you don't have to spend an action to move the units to the parent section. They swing over on ropes onto the opposing ship. So they don't swing back unless you have skirmishers. But, but they, they do take part in the boarding from above. Now, kind of the bad thing I hinted at is uh, fighting, having models in the fighting tops and getting hit with cannon is is actually really bad right now. <laughs> Cuz uh if you have your opponent targets your your rigging with a cannon shot, then any models that are in the rigging take the hits first. And then for every two hits the rigging took, they have to make your opponent makes or you whoever owns the gang and that got hit makes one save for the unit that's below the rigging. So kind of if you shoot the fighting top, if there's models in the fighting top and you shoot, do a whole broadside just against the rigging, 
not only will you kill the models mm. in the fighting top, but you kind of get to like almost two for one. <laughs> Any models that are below it. Falling spars and legs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so usually when when Joseph and I did our our big galleon versus galleon thousand point game, we talked about I brought up a gentleman's agreement not to abuse that rule to murder a whole all the guys in the fighting tops on the first salvo just because it it uh it's not good if i may hop in for one of the cons and this is again your mileage may vary i'm a frigate guy i like my fast ships i fly as the galleon for my purposes poor maneuverability handles worse than the flood because it's big fat and slow it's a bigger bathtub essentially and I like to board, and this is not a good boarding ship. If you're trying to board in a galleon, you got to be using the cheese rules that they created, I think, last year or the year before for April Fool's, where they had the 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 knockoff of that ship that we don't talk about from that Disney franchise, because we don't want to cease and desist, <clears throat> where it makes the galleon move five inches. Unless you're using that, it's not a good boarding platform. You should stay away from it. That's about the only con that I have personally against it. <laughs> The one thing about boarding is the ship is so big, you can almost barricade the whole board. <laughs> so at some level, it's actually hard to get away from this ship, even though it can, can't can turn that quickly. Uh, not always true, but there is bulk on its side as far as not letting a ship evade it. Yeah, and that this is the only ship so far that only has a two-inch turn radius. And what I've read about with how whip staffs work, two inches is actually really generous. <laughs> it should be should be like one inch. If that sailing master helps a little bit, and you probably want a sailing master two to give you those uh, bursts of speed. Uh, this ship does only go two inches upwind. So yeah, sailing master really good, and then there's some new ship upgrades that'll be coming along and raise the black that might be really fascinating to apply to the big ship like this might make it go yeah. faster or get some extra speed mm -hmm. yeah it needs it if only you could trade hull for <laughs> hull for speed well let's talk about some of the game opportunities and hobbying this ship hobbying is a big project we already touched on that but it is a big piece of time you got to put into it to I really give it uh, what it needs, but it is a labor of love, though. Beautiful yeah. piece, and it's a centerpiece of any fleet. Or if you can put it on a bookshelf in your house, and it has value that way too, if you want. Um, but yeah, like we said, it takes a lot of hours. It's also just hard to manhandle while you're painting it. You kind of have to bear hug it sometimes, or <laughs> just I could prop it up with wedges and towels on your painting desk because you can't really hold it all the time you wear the paint off it's a bit of a trick it was, it was the it's the biggest miniature miniature quote i've ever painted but well worth it i have a <laughs> miscast one i want to paint to as a as a wreck oh fun. yeah but i'm not sure if i have the fortitude to do it yet <laughs> i believe in you this is definitely a fun painting project it's also you know, you're paying $400 for this, and you want it to be a display piece in your home. I have mine that I use as a display piece, and I've had, it makes people that don't even play the game, like, look at it and admire it. I'm also a big proponent on the, the towel method for painting it. That, that's, that's what I did, I, is I had a huge box of towels that I used to make it so I could prop it up and, and suspend it to get all the different angles. This is kind of ridiculous. So painting the ship is a lot of fun. I've I really enjoyed it. And rigging everything is also really fun with this ship. It has more rigging than any ship other than the other larger ship, the six rate. But kind of my favorite part of it is fun lists that you can do with it. One of the first lists that I made after looking at the gun decks was a a kind of turtle galleon list where you don't put anybody on the decks. You have only Marineros Paqueros in the gun decks to protect them from all small arms fire. <laughs> and 
Marineros Paqueros in the gun deck, uh, save on save on threes. So <laughs> against small arms fire, not against cannons. Cannons they're saving on fives, which is pretty good to begin with, because to get cannon hits they have to go through heavily built and a five fortitude. Yeah. Uh, it does take away their ability to do defensive pokes if you're boarded, but you can kind of charge through that anyways. Some other fun lists that you can do is, like I said, where you just focus on the front and you have kind of a defensive tower with the swivel guns, or you can just do the middle of the ship and kind of leave nobody in the front. When you're going to do a galleon in smaller lists, you want to leave decks empty. So if your opponent is brought cannons, not only are their cannons going to be ineffective because of the hull fortitude and also heavily built, but you also want to make them have to shoot unoccupied decks sometimes. That's because, <laughs> yeah, because they don't kill anybody. They're just hoping to get, get it. And uh, you'd rather, when they shoot at your ship, them not kill anybody. <laughs> So, although that's dangerous to leave decks open because people can board it a lot easier that way, so there's a cost there. But there is. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I've never had it bite me in the butt leaving the poop deck of the galleon unoccupied because it's so far up there. That's true. Yeah. You know, it's a bad place to try boarding. It's also the the gun deck that has the least reason to put somebody in. Least cannons back there. Yeah, you get one cannon. And the chasers. It's not a lot. It's not 20 models worth, that's for sure. I think even when we did that 1,000-point game, I only put 12 dudes back there. Only. Minimum-sized well, unit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a minimum-sized unit. I think there's quite a few different normal, not crazy porcupine turtle lists you can do, too. Most obvious is the large cannon list. If you want to do a huge game, you can do a ton of heavy cannons. Uh, if you want to do just a super shooty list at two or 300 points, you can put a lot of light cannons on here. And no matter where the enemy is, if you have those chasers and those 12 guns on the, both sides, you can usually hit them. And even if they're small guns, you can do quite a bit of damage. You also can just do a well-balanced one list. You can have maybe two decks of guns plus guys on deck. There's a lot of different ways you can balance this towards guns or no guns. I've done a 200 point list with no cannons at all. and just use it as a big, impressive, tall ship. You get advantage of height and you get advantage of not getting boarded so easy. Um, so you don't even need to focus on cannons for 25 points. It's not that much for a 200 point game. You do make yourself immune to yeah almost immune to cannons if you're in this ship yeah don't even it's even really hard to it. do <laughs> yeah anything to it so you use the spanish method where you don't have cannons poking out you got logs oh <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> so i enjoy doing different things with it every time you play it you can kind of do a, a bit of a different style list and it it's, it works pretty well it, besides not being very fast or maneuverable it's surprisingly flexible. I wish everyone could have it in their navy, but at the dollar <laughs> price point, it's not for everyone. Since the Galleon is a four-deck ship, we have to compare it to the other four-deck sh ship in the game as the sixth-rate frigate. They do both cost 25 points and four decks, but they're very different ships. Um, sixth rate is faster more maneuverable, but has less cannons, can't carry as many heavy cannons, and it doesn't have the height. It's not as heavy of draft. We haven't talked about that. The 12 draft is nasty on the galleon. I've beached mine <laughs> twice in one game at the same time, even. Uh, really, For those who don't know, Joe is literally a shoal magnet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have no chance, even with a pilot, you're going to hit the shoal. But how, how do you guys compare these two ships which do you prefer or which ones do you, which one do you like yeah I, I honestly think that the the galleon fares better than the uh six rate whenever they're you're going to have a galleon compete on the same level as six rate then the six rate to do has to do something other than cannons because the galleon has it beat as far as cannon spaces 
protected cannon crew. The six rate doesn't have gun decks, right. and that if you if they just try competing on cannons, we've done cannon lists against cannon lists. So that the C game that you're talking about the, with the storm that was me trying to do a dedicated cannon list for the six rate, and you did a cannon uh, mostly dedicated cannon list for the the uh, galleon. I think you fit some mil, uh, militianos in there. <laughs> yep. I couldn't do as much damage as you were doing to my ship because the six rate just had the same hull as the light frigate. Right. Uh, the galleon's a lot tougher and can carry more guns. So in a cannon duel, galleon's going to win hands down if you have enough points. And has that heavily built. So yeah, you can't. It can't. Yeah. It has to choose something somewhere else to fight, either maneuverability or boarding, or being a very special ship. You know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the six ray is definitely more aggressive, and you really have to figure out what you're gonna do. Because again, doing I've done a six rate versus Galleon, and I got lucky boarding on turn two and boarding a deck that didn't have anybody on it, so I could get up there pretty much, you know, un unshot at. But you really do have to dedicate it. Well, I prefer the six rate because the way I play, I like speed and maneuverability. It is definitely the more aggressive of the two. I would say that the skill gap is definitely higher. If you're going to play a Galleon, you're going to play a Floating Fortress. You just want to pelt everyone. So by the time they get to you two board, if they get there, you just mop them up because they're so beat up. But if you're going to play a six rate against a Galleon, you need to... I would just almost recommend doing a boarding list and just trying to close as quickly as possible and get on there and get going. Because the longer you stay out outside of boarding range, the longer you're just going to get pelted by those cannons. If you're playing a galleon a six threat on a four foot by four foot board, you're about, what, six inches between you at the start of the game anyway? Yeah. yeah <laughs> Depending it's... on the scenario, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the galleon is definitely, if you love Spanish... It's iconic for the Spain, but if you want to do France or England or uh, the Dutch or something, the sixth rate seems a, a kind of cool. The other thing is the sixth rate, unless you're doing really big games, the light frigate does almost all the same things. The galleon is much more unique. Yeah, nothing can come. No other ship really compares to it. The closest it would be the the flute. If you're going to buy the heavily built for it, it can do an impersonation of the galleon, really. But it's not, it doesn't have the gun decks, it doesn't have mm -hmm. the cut, doesn't come with the fighting tops, it doesn't have the resolve, it doesn't, can't carry heavy cannons. You can play the Galleon in a 100 point game and just have like three decks that have just one heavy cannon on it. <laughs> yeah, kind of like two light cannons, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just, just do that and probably have a fun time with it. So there's a lot of things that the Galleon is really unique. But some people have made the Galleon even more unique. For those who don't want to specifically play Spanish, but also want to, you know, kind of buff things up, a fellow by the name of Rick Kassler actually took two Galleons and added another middle gun deck, creating essentially a fourth-rate ship of the line. So that's another hobby project you can do. Obviously, you want a gentleman's agreement this. If, you know, you do this and show up to a tournament, they're going to look at you and go, oh, that's cool, but not tournament legal. But looks great. We're going to plug pictures in here because they look amazing. And I geeked out over it because it just looks great. But for you crazy people who really want to, you know, buff up the size of the game, if you got enough disposable income, have all your friends buy two galleons, kit it out, and have a ship of the line battle. And it'll be hilarious. <laughs> Too much for me. Yeah, the galleons is already a big enough hobby project. Yeah, I don't need more. <laughs> About the Galleon's awesome ship, um, for more Blood and Plunder ship reviews, including a review on the Galleon, you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out all our articles there. We have articles on all the ships, the nations, and different factions, terrain building, painting guides, battle reports, all things Blood and Plunder. Go check it out there. Check out the rest of our YouTube video as well. We'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. As always, keep your dice at the ready and the wind at your back, your heart, and run away from the galleons.